Good afternoon. I'm Kevin Walker, Senior Vice President of Public Policy for the Overland Park Chamber. With me today is Amanda Vega Mavic, a candidate for Overland Park City Council Ward 3. Today we're going to spend some time getting to know Amanda and learn about her candidacy and her priorities if elected to the council. Amanda, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Let's start by having you take a few minutes to introduce yourself and tell us why you're running for the City Council. Uh, as Kevin mentioned, my name is Amanda Vega Mavic. I am um, an educator, I'm a mom, and I'm a wife. I just started my 21st year in education. I've done everything from K to 12th grade, and I'm currently the director of an early childhood um, education center. Um, I've been, you know, I, I've I feel very strongly about being involved in my community and although I've lived in a couple different places, I've always made it a point to be involved. Um, so here in Overland Park and in, in, in the Johnson County area in general, I'm a member of the Johnson County Library Foundation Board, I'm a member of the Latina Giving Circle Steering Committee, I participate in the uh, Johnson County Latina Leadership Network as well as the Johnson County Leadership Network which is comprised of both men and women. Um, and I also volunteer um, when and where I am, I am able to. Um, previous volunteer and service experiences have included the Rosedale Development Association, um, and I've also been a volunteer at a domestic violence hotline. Um, as to why I want to run, again, I've just always been involved wherever I've been. Whatever community I've lived in, I've been involved. Um, and for me, there's no difference now that I'm in Overland Park. Uh, we talk about how great a city Overland Park is, and since the last census, we've had 30,000 new residents, and I am one of those 30,000 new residents who has made Overland Park home in just the last 10 years. Um, and I'm ready to be a part of the city government. I'm ready to do uh, my part um, to help the city continue to be as wonderful a city as it is, and the city that so many of us choose to make home. Okay. Well, let's transition to a few questions if you're ready for that. Uh, first one, a recent poll released by the Kansas City Area Home Builders and the Overland Park Chamber Foundation found that 75% of the respondents believe the city is going in the right direction. What is your reaction to this and do you agree or disagree? I agree. I agree that our city is going in the right direction. Um, you know, I think there's a number of um, statistics and um, you know, top top list out there that indicate that Overland Park is such a great place to live. It is a desirable place to live, to live, to work, to learn, and to play. Um, so I do believe we are going in the right direction. I do not believe that means we can become complacent. Um, I think the work to be as great as we are is a continuous, it's just continuous. And so I think um, we're moving in the right, right direction, but we need to keep up the work to continue moving in the right direction. What do you believe are the greatest challenges the city faces over the next 10 years and how would you address them? I think growth. Um, so I think there's there's two challenges that come to mind um, and they're both related to growth. One of them is definitely um, development as it, there's different you know surveys that have just come out recently um, and in my conversations with voters as I've been knocking on doors a lot of them ask about development um, and, and I think you know so for me, the challenge is the thing that we need to keep in mind is we don't have to go into every development project that comes our way. Um, we don't have to develop on every open piece of land. Um, and so I think the challenge is to continue to vet all of the projects that come across, um, to continue to look at them to make sure that they benefit the entire community and not just a few. Um, I, I do believe that residents often feel as if some of the development projects that we've gone into benefit a few rather than rather than many and so making sure we're doing what we can to benefit our entire community our entire city um, the other part of that growth that i think is going to be a challenge for us is, is just the number of people that are coming to us that are, are choosing to live here and with that is a more and more diverse group of people overland park is much more diverse than i think a lot of people realize it is also much more diverse than what is currently reflected on our city council um, and, and not just the city council, this is something I'll say to, to every door that I, um, to the, the people who answer every door that I knock on. Um, it's not just the city council, it's the advisory boards, it's the committees, it's everybody that comes together to govern our city. It's not as diverse as the, tr as the, as the residents in our city. Um, and so I think as we look at the growth of our city, um, both with business, with people, and with development, um, we need to make sure that we are taking into, into mind and consideration everybody's perspectives and doing what we can to engage um, all voices, including the unusual ones. How will you specifically engage with business leaders to make Overland Park prosper? Um, 
I think a lot of conversations. You know, I, I will be honest, um, the business aspect of being a city council person is some place where I have my own personal growth and development to do. Um, I'm an educator, that's where I spend my days and, and I can um, balance a budget and I can manage a budget and I can raise money and I can make tough decisions when it comes to money, um, but I'm not a business person. And so I think at the, the very beginning, for me, a lot of that is just going to be learning. Um, a lot of conversations, a lot of asking questions of my own to learn, and then from there, um, just building relationships and having honest conversations with people. Um, you know, and and again, it's you know, education and business are two different things, but I think there are some things that can be carried over, and a lot of it is relationships. And so, doing what I can to get myself out there, um, I've had conversations with some small business owners, especially as I've been um, campaigning, and so having. Um, continuing to have those conversations but then also conversations with larger businesses and, and developers um, because their perspective and their opinion matters as well um, so again a lot of it will be learning at the beginning and then working to build relationships as, as time goes on overland park rates highly in countless community assessments yet competition with other communities for jobs and quality employers is fierce what tools would you employ as a council member to ensure Overland Park remains competitive in economic development? I, there, there are no drastic changes that I would make. Again, Overland Park is not the city that it is because it's doing things terribly wrong. Um, so, so first of all, I would. Um, there's a lot that I would continue to do. Um, but again, I think um, I also wouldn't consider myself a single issue voter by any means. But you'll hear me talk a lot about diversity and equity and inclusion. Um, and you'll also hear me talk a lot about transparency and accountability, and you'll also hear me talk a lot about our climate and environmental sustainability. Um, so that being said, in order to make ourselves, um, to continue to be strong when it comes to business development, I think we need to, again, think about how we are engaging those unusual voices, how we are working with more and more diverse communities, how um, the opportunities to grow businesses that are owned um, by different communities, minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses, um, businesses that are owned by, that by um, just groups that aren't currently represented. In. And then I think also um, thinking about how to develop businesses that cater to the different populations and to the different communities, I think that's an area for growth. Um, but I think a lot of it is just, again, we are an incredibly diverse city and that diversity, that diversity is growing. Um, and so making sure that we are doing what we can to include all of those new residents, all of those diverse residents in the decisions, the business decisions that we make. As you are aware, the current city manager has announced his retirement. What qualities and characteristics do you want to see in the next city manager? Um, I had an opportunity to meet with Bill Ivel shortly before he announced his retirement. Um, and so I am I am personally sad to see him go because I was, I was looking forward to being able to work with him. Um, I think in terms of the qualities, um, you know, when I think about somebody who can work with um, groups that may or not always be on the same page, um, we have, and that's just the nature of anything, right? That's the nature of any business, of any industry. You're going to have people who have different opinions about how to achieve a common goal. And so I think about somebody who can help bring people together and who can help bring people together and stay focused on the goal at hand, to stay focused on the mission. Um, and so I think somebody who is able to listen, um, somebody who is able to ask hard questions and maybe sometimes say the statement or the conclusion that not everybody always wants to hear but has to be said. Um, so I think a courageous leader is what comes to mind, somebody who's willing to put themselves out there. Um, and somebody who uh, who, who sees it? Um, who sees it as service? Who sees you know bringing our city together, and helping our city to continue to be in a wonderful place, um, and and who sees it as something bigger than themselves? Um, and then I think somebody who's just a visionary, um, somebody who can see things that maybe nobody else has seen, or again who can ask the questions to get the people around them thinking. Um, you know, that, that's part of being a leader and that's part of, of, of helping uh, organizations and groups grow is, is being able to ask the right questions to just get everybody's thought process going um, and can be respect, respectful of those different thought process, processes. Um, what else would I like to see in a city manager? And somebody who's engaged, you know, somebody who is, who is truly a part of our city, 
who understands our city, who isn't just coming in to do a job, um, but somebody who, who really takes the time to learn what we're all about and who we are as a community. How will you balance the priorities within your ward with those of the city as a whole? You know, that I've thought about that question as I've been knocking on doors um, because, you know, I, I come across residents who who disagreed with um, decisions or who agreed with decisions that, you know, the, the, the perhaps other um, other areas felt differently on. Um, you know, I think part of it is for me staying in the know of what the people in my ward want and what they desire, what they feel that they need, and doing my part to represent that to the city council and speaking up for them and making sure that what they want is being heard. Um, that being said, I also know I'm not the sole decision maker at that table. Um, I also know that no matter how much I bring their perspective to the table, no matter how much I, I speak up for them, that sometimes what we want as a ward may not be what ends up coming out as the final decision. Um, but I think my role is to make sure that I, making myself available. So um, that's the other thing is I, that I've been thinking about is um, how will I just engage with people in the ward? You know, email, phone calls. Am I going to be holding, you know, opportunities for them to come in, like, town hall type things or meet and greet? So, you know, how am I going to make myself available to them um, so that they can let me know their um, their celebrations, their concerns, you know, their, their, their questions, their everything. Um, so that's part of it is just making sure that I'm available to them. And the same thing that I said about the city manager being out and about, it's the same thing, um, you know, and that's one thing that I connect to being in education is when you're an educator, you're in your community. You're out and about. Um, you want your children and your families to know that you care about the community, again, that you're not just coming in to do a job. Um, so that's one thing. It's just being accessible, making sure that the residents of Ward 3 know how to find me and how to ask questions and express concerns and tell me the great things that are going on as well. Um, and then just making sure that I'm pre representing that on the, the committees, again, the different, the different groups as well as city council. Um, and when something doesn't go the way that maybe we want, is again having those conversations with them and making sure that they understand, um, or doing my best to make sure that they understand the thought process and the decision making process as to maybe why we didn't get what we wanted. According to the Johnson County Community Housing Study, Overland Park needs approximately 4,600 owner occupied housing units at or below $250,000 and approximately 2,700 rental units with mo monthly rent at or below $1,000 to satisfy attainable housing needs by 2030. What is your reaction to this finding and what specific proposals would you bring to the table to support attainable housing goals? Um, I agree with the finding. Um, and I agree with it because it, it, it matches what I'm hearing. It matches other, other research that we, other research, other studies that have come out. And it also matches um, what residents are saying to me when I'm knocking on doors. Um, so I think I have yet to meet a resident who does not feel that we need more affordable, more affordable housing. Everybody seems to understand that this is a need in our city. Um, that being said, I do hear a lot of concerns about apartment buildings um, and just um, and, and different reasons that people are concerned about apartment buildings. But you know, two of them are just we have a lot of them already, um, and the height of them. And so what I hear from residents is they know that we need affordable housing, they are ready for more affordable housing, but they'd like to see something other than apartment buildings. And, and you know, we have this study that was done by UCS that gave all types of different options. Um, and so if elected, that's something that I'd like to pursue is how to, um, you know, changing um, poly zoning policies, um, you know, working at, at, and again, thinking about uh, when developers come to us with different projects and really just um, pushing for variety in that affordable housing. Um, redevelopment is also something that I care a lot about that I would personally, again, like to see a lot of. Um, I care about the environment, and, and one of the things with me about the environment is, again, we don't need to put a building on every open piece of land. I think there's a lot to be said about maintaining, and again, we have, we have wonderful green space here in Overland Park, um, and so maintaining as much of that as possible. Um, so looking at redevelopment, and I know there are some examples, there's a very recent one even, you know, just in Ward 3, uh, being able to take a building that was for something else and redeveloping it into housing. Um, so I would specifically look at um, changes in zoning policies um, so that we have a, a wider variety of, of affordable housing and also um, 
push and really encourage and support um, redevelopment of buildings that are already existing into some type of affordable housing. What elements of Vision Metcalf and Forward OP do you believe are the most important for the future of Overland Park? Um, so again, you'll hear me talk a lot about diversity, equity, inclusion, and all of the other topics and factors that come with that. And um, one of the things specifically to Forward OP that stands out to me um, is the, the action step on welcoming and what we can do to be a more welcoming city. And so one of um, the specific things that I would like to be a part of is um, there's a specific action step about um, developing more diverse leaders. And I'd, I'd like to be a part of that. And I think uh, what we can do is, is work with organizations like the Chamber um, and the Kansas Leadership Center and other similar organizations that help to develop leaders um, to recruit them a more diverse pool of, of leaders, if you will, um, to recruit them, to engage them, to develop them, and to help them be involved in our in our city. Um, and so that is something that I would very much like to be a part of. Again, 30,000 30, new residents, um, a city that is growing in its diversity, and so I want to make sure that um, if we really think about Forward OP and we think of that particular um, initiative area and those action steps, um, I want to be a part of doing more intentional work to make sure that that happens and that as we look at all of these new and diverse residents, and, and not to say that only the new residents are diverse because there's been diversity here for, for quite some time, so I do need to clarify that, um, but making sure that we are we are recruiting people to be a part of our city and to be a part of the governance of our city. And my last question for you today is, since its founding in 1960, Overland Park leaders have had a long history of visionary planning. What do you believe the city should do today to ensure the city's prosperity for the next 60 years? Um, I think continue to <laughs> everything that they're doing. Again, I, I think we are the amazing city that we are because things have been done well, things have been done correctly. Um, I wouldn't make any big changes. Um, I, would, I, I think if there was anything I would, I would change, um, it's, it's again making sure that we are engaging as many voices as possible in that process. Um, engaging the unusual voices in that process. You know, we're, we're, we've started the, the update of the comprehensive plan, and one of the things that I've noticed um, is a lot of it is, is accessible through the uh, city website. Um, a lot of it is going to YouTube videos and watching videos and then answering um, questionnaires based on those videos. And when I look at the number of views on some of the videos for a city of our size, there are not a lot, there's only a few hundred views on some of those videos, and so, um, as we, as we envision the future and as we plan for that, I think we need to stop and think about who, who's currently a part of that process um, and how are they engaging with that process and, and then who's not there and what are the opportunities for engagement that we're missing. Um, I, was, I had a very very candid conversation with some neighbors when I was canvassing. It was a, you know, two gentlemen and one of them you know, made some jokes about the other one and how he's just not, he's not tech savvy. He's not, he doesn't get on websites. He doesn't get on social media. And so um, the one neighbor knew that the other neighbor was missing out on opportunities to be involved. And, and he made the comment of, I'm there and I can help him find these opportunities, but what about the people out there that don't have somebody to help them? And so are completely missing those opportunities to be a part of the visionary um, planning for our city. So I think in the, in the grand scheme of things, we, we do need to just keep doing a lot of what we're doing. I don't think there's any need for huge major changes, um, but I think there's work to be done to make sure that we're engaging as many people as we possibly can in, in our planning process. Well, Amanda, I appreciate you spending some time with us today. Before we close, I want to give you a couple of minutes to provide any final thoughts if you'd like. Um, you know, I I think I've answered a lot of them. You know, I, I, I didn't talk a lot about um, the transparency and the accountability. I know we get questions about tax rates. Um, and again, we have some research out there, some recent research as well as that has been confirmed in a sense when, um, by the residents that I talked to when I'm canvassing. Um, people are generally, generally happy with, with where we are as a city and our tax rates. That doesn't mean everybody is, but generally people are happy. What I've also come to find out or, or had confirmed is that people are willing to have increases in the taxes that they're paying if they know that it's going to something that they consider a priority. And again, we have information out there that tells us where, what are the priorities for the residents of Overland Park. Um, and so I think, you know, again, we just need to make sure that we are, we are engaging people, we are listening to them, 
we are taking note of what they consider priorities and what they don't consider priorities. And so that way, when we feel like we need to make those decisions, we know that they're gonna, we're going to have their support because we're doing something that they want to see in the first place. Um, and then also, again, with the environment, um, I think Overland Park has a number of programs already in place to help address climate change. Um, again, I think there's a little bit more that we can do to help make sure that residents know about those programs and are taking advantage of those programs. Um, I know that residents are concerned with, um, with things such as flooding. Um, so, you know, just kind of asking ourselves those questions of what are we doing? Are we doing enough? Is there something more we should be exploring? Um, and that's not to say that those conversations are not already happening, um, but just, you know, some of the things that I, I would want to make sure are continuing or, or to get going. Um, but other than that, again, I'm, I'm an educator. I'm going to bring a very different perspective to, to city council. Um, when you're an educator, you are constantly looking out for who's, who's, you know, who's, who's playing at the playground, um, who's sitting at the lunch table alone, who's engaged, who's not engaged. And, and not to simplify it, but I think a lot of those experiences that I have as an educator, I can bring to city council. Um, and again, just kind of stopping to look at who's engaged, who's not engaged, what are we doing to engage them, are we doing enough, is there more that we can do? Um, the other thing we talk a lot about in education is you have to meet your students where they are. And so I think that's something that can be transferred to city council is we need to meet our residents where they are, and are we doing enough of that? Um, but I, I, you know, I'm, um, I think I've covered it all, everything that I would want you to know about me. Um, so I, you can learn more by going to my website, amanda4op.com, and that's the word for, so amanda, F-O-R-O-P.com. Um, I'm also on, social, on Facebook at amanda4op, um, and I hope I can count on your support in, in just a few weeks. <laughs> well, good segue, just to uh, remind everybody that uh, voting starts uh, Wednesday, October 13th with the advance voting by mail. Advance voting in person begins on Saturday, October 23rd. And of course, election day is Tuesday, November 2nd. Thank you.